D&D actual play podcast streaming show, sometimes YouTube show when I upload those videos. I'm Jake Friday, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, and is it a coincidence that it is January 20th and we're playing on, uh, playing our uh, episode 20? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I just planned it. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, introduce, we have a new person here who's going to join us, hopefully in perpetuity, and hopefully we all live in perpetuity so we can just keep playing this game forever. Uh, this is Brian. What's up, Brian? Hey, everybody. Um, hey. Okay. <laughs> so, previously on Venture... I just realized we're, I haven't done the... Uh, I guess that's not a thing anymore, Dave. The, uh, you know, your opening song, sing-songy thing. Uh, I guess we can let that <laughs> Don't die. Don't let the sun <laughs> come down on me. It's Although I search down. myself. <laughs> Yeah. Miss, perfect. I did a I did a private poll and the audience didn't like it, so that's why we stopped doing it. You know, oh. was that a poll of was that a poll of one? That's harsh. It was one. I'm the only one who filled it out. You're right. <laughs> Richard really commits to his RPing. As soon as the show starts, he gets into character and he does not break character. Uh, let me do a recap real quick, and we'll get down to business. Previously on Venture Ventures, the Big Bedfellows took a job searching and uh, potentially rescuing a member of the Felix Tricknips Foundation um, who was heading to the Viranol Dominion in the far north of the continent of Envir. Um, they sent him up there, his name is Alu, and they sent him up there because uh, their business between the Dominion uh, had kind of gone quiet and they stopped receiving shipments of crystals, stuff like that, so he disappeared. It was a search and rescue mission. Um, two of the, uh, members of the Big Bed Fellows took some time off, so Max Morningbrow, handler for Venture Ventures Adventuring Agency, added these three wonderful people, two of which were through the, uh, Anista branch, one of which was through the Vera Mall branch, and, um, four of them ventured up north, eventually making their way to Serenity Springs, just outside Vera Null Dominion, where they were told they would meet uh, Crispin, the fifth member of the team. Um, let's see. Got that, got that, got that. Uh, they met a another person. His name was Inquisitor Velov, and he was on the train and told them that um, he would be joining them as kind of a guide. Uh, the quality of his guidance is <laughs> up for debate but uh he led them to a cave and um they found alu pretty quickly except he was not answering questions correctly and seemed a little dim or dull and eventually through some previous experiences that Prodi and uh, Nihilus had with Oblexes, they figured out that poor Alu probably was taken by an Oblex, and this was just a simulacrum. So they fought it, and pretty damn quickly uh, arrested it in the form of a polymorph. It was a sheep, right, guys? That that yep. um okay, and then exited the cave that they were in just outside of Serenity Springs, only to find a massive 20-foot-tall troll attacking the town, unlike any troll they had ever seen, uh, full of crystals, pinkish, rose-colored, I'd say rose-colored more, uh, crystals jutting out of this massive uh, abomination's uh, body. So that's where we left off. And let's roll for initiative, guys. All right. Fifteen. <laughs> Let's see. Sixteen. Okay. Sixteen or sin. Um, Ashwin? Ten. Ten. Uh, Nihilus? 
two. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Deuces. Uh, mm-hmm. Brian? Oh, I'm in this one too? How exciting. Might as well start. Let's just get get that out of... They don't know uh, you're there yet, but we'll just... Sure, sure. 13. Okay. <laughs> We just instantly attack him because we don't know who he is. <laughs> who are you? Um, no, he ah! he um, he was told uh, some stuff about you guys more than you guys were told about him, being that uh, you guys are much more recognizable. <laughs> you're you're quite a unique group. Um, okay, so that who am I missing? I'm missing. Did I get everyone. Please, please tell me you're above like. Five feet tall, because we just have all tiny. <laughs> You'll people. find out. You'll find out. Okay, <laughs> um, one sec. Boom, boom. Except for Orson. Orson's just a regular guy, right? It's a regular human. <laughs> but how tall is he? It's about five foot ten. Nice. Or eleven on a good day. He towers over the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Last where we left off, you guys were heading to fend off the... T- what you see is this uh, troll essentially attacking the town, and that cave wasn't too far outside of town. Um, and uh, from what... Who's who's proficient in Arcana? I am. Is that just... Okay. Make an Arcana uh, check while I continue um, describing what's going on, Dave. Would you like me to do one as well? Are you proficient? Yeah, I'm a plus oh. three in it. Oh, cool. A, I got a 20, not natural 20. 19. Okay, both of you see that this beast is not only doing troll-like things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you laughing at the breathing? I'm laughing at Dave's breathing. Yeah, you were breathing right into the mic. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so not only is he doing troll-like things, clawing, biting, but out of his left arm, he's shooting magic missiles, um, at various people in the town who are screaming and running. As you're getting, as you're getting closer, though, um, you hear the townspeople, um, yelling about a wheelbarrow. They're, they're yelling, who had the wheelbarrow last? And someone screams, it was Dave! And uh, then this troll is just destroying parts of the town. And you guys are... The troll hasn't seen you guys yet, and you're coming up on this thing. Crispin, you were in a local bar, just kind of biding your time. You have been in town for a few days now. Um, uh, It's a pretty boring town, uh, so maybe drinking might be the best way to pass your time while you're waiting but of course you would have heard all of this commotion and as you're coming out of the local tavern you see these uh people that you were told to look for uh coming up behind the troll so the troll is facing you kind of like the down think of like a wild west town the main uh thoroughfare there uh you kind of step out, and the troll is facing you, doing destroying things, screaming, and uh, you see the people you're looking for behind it running up, as well as a uh, cell phone ring, and <laughs> no, um, <laughs> as well as Inquisitor Velov, who is slowing down. He's no, he's not leading the way as you guys are approaching this this beast. Um, so yeah, let's get started, and all of you. Um, are within um, 60 feet, I'll say, starting this encounter. Um, Or if you'd like to be further, let me know. Uh, 60 feet of this crystal troll. And Orson, you are up. All right. Um, So, 60 feet of this crystal troll. I am... I'm going to cast... Uh, Witch Bolt. Let's do it. It's right. it's great having another uh, warlock in the team because he's just doing everything that I would do. You know? <laughs> so now I'll just just double up or think of something more more yeah. uh, creative or something. Perfect. Yeah. So okay. So I have to roll. 
A 4d12. Okay. Um, okay, so 4d12. Four? Okay, I roll a... That's a 25. save, right? Huh? That's a, uh, a save on the... Uh, is it a save or an attack? It is... It's a, sorry, save. It's a save for the creature being attacked, right? Um, I'm taking a look right now... Um, on a hit. Oh, so, um... Let me know if you need me to help you out. Okay, I'm just reading. A beam of crackling blue energy lances out towards a creature within range. Uh, making a ranged spell attack against a creature on a hit. The target takes 1d12 lightning damage, um, on, and on each turn of my duration... On each turn of your duration, you can cause your action to deal additional... Lightning damage to your ta target automatically. So it is target an attack. Anything else? So it's an attack. Okay, perfect. Uh, and you said you you rolled a d twenty, and what was your attack roll? Or... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just rolled the attack, but I didn't roll a d twenty. So oh, okay. let me roll d twenty. Oh, that's uh, hold on. That did not go so high. Uh, let's see. That would be a spell attack of. Do, 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 do. Um, twelve. That is not going to do it. Your nope. black energy, lightning energy shoots out towards this creature, and uh, zooms by it. And it's it's um it heard the noise of the witch bolt. We'll say, um, but it's still focused on these townspeople um, maybe getting a little snack uh, or continued meal. And a uh, little bit about the time of day, the sun's going down, and as I described last episode, the, um, the rose-colored crystals that are jutting out of this troll are reflecting some of the sunlight, the, the low-slung uh, sunlight shooting, uh, refracting through the crystals. And it's quite beautiful if it weren't coming out of a disgusting creature. All right, mm. Proddy. Well, since he didn't hit with Witch Bolts, I'll try it. Yeah, you get it's just like <laughs> nice. you get two shots. Yep. Uh, rolled a fourteen. I think it's plus my uh, charisma. Correct. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, it is. 16. That is not quite going to do it. It was much wow. closer uh, this time. Um, and now the troll is definitely starting to wonder, what the frick is happening? <laughs> and he doesn't curse. He's a non-cursing troll. So, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I think we established last episode that none of you speak giant or uh, shard speak, so you don't understand him going, frick, what the frick? Uh Okay. Let's see. Crispin, you are in front of this thing. It's not attacking you. Um, you see these two. You see a Kenku uh, hold up a rod and shoot uh, Witch Bolt. I'm sure you've probably seen Witch Bolt before in your adventuring. Um, and you saw a human do the same as well. What would you like to do, Crispin? Uh, so how far away am I? Am I a good 50 feet or so from yeah, it too? Yeah, you're 60. Just on the yeah. 60 feet? Okay. Um, so what you guys see basically is a dude way far away from the troll on the other side, um, standing in front of the building he just walked out of. He's just a human guy, about six feet tall, has a nice wide-brimmed leather hat, light leather vest, linen shirt, casual cloth pants. Um, oh, he Niall, this is very into him. <laughs> He closes the distance between the building and the troll almost instantly. Blink of an eye, he's in front of the troll, and all of a sudden he has a flail in his hand, and he just starts wailing on the troll, um, first with the flail, and then he comes around with his elbow and cracks the uh, tries to crack the troll in the face. So cool. I'm going to do that. Let's do it. Wow. Um, so the flail was a nat one. <laughs> good start great start such an epic description and uh yep. just the follow through yeah yeah so that uh that doesn't work um however the uh elbow is a nat 20 perfect 
So do it. that does work. Um, let's see, that is. Uh... So two, four, eight points of damage with my elbow. Beautiful. Um, and then I'm going to come around with my uh, foot and try to kick him in the face from the other side with my bonus attack. Heck yeah. Bonus action. Um, that's a 22 to hit. Yeah. And that does seven points of damage. Beautiful. Okay. So and then I stand there ready to get punched in the face back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Beautiful. Um, so, Crispin, keep in mind, I think I mentioned to you that um, you were told to find them and that they know less about um, what to look for. They knew they were meeting someone up there. They just didn't know who. So <laughs> don't, um, uh, with, with, I just don't want to give the chance to one of these knuckleheads to, uh, oopsie daisy. Um, <laughs> anyways, so, uh, Ashwin, it is your turn. Ashwin is a mouse folk, uh, and as many people have said, adorable. <laughs> uh, can I, can I yell at him? At the... Yeah. All right. Uh, Ashwin's going to be like, a. Hey, pick on someone your own size. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, just just a basic attack. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Rapier. Yeah, just the rapier. So roll a d20 and then add. Um, for a second there, I was like, oh no, is this the earthquake that we've been waiting for in LA? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to move things. Over. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? I was like, yeah, maybe, don't worry, it'll make it to you. <laughs> it'll. I thought it was hitting you first. Um, go ahead, uh, Lex. I rolled a ten. Okay, that won't do it. But you have another. Yeah, we're gonna try it again. Okay. Um, 15. That won't quite do it. Um, but you have closed the this distance. This is a giant. It's not fair. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> well, Ashwin, your swing, your second swing especially, you missed on the first one, but your second swing uh, especially um, hits a crystal. And you two, Crispin and Ashwin, are up close on this thing. You can see these crystals are growing kind of continuously out of its skin and receding back into its skin. It's very little skin that's left of its original form. Uh, so a jutting crystal growing out of its body uh, deflects your second attack. Um, anything else you'd like to do, Ashwin? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you can do... Um, yeah, don't uh, worry about asking for help on this. This is your second can I, game. Can I, can I climb on him? Um, we'll say you're you're. I think you're out of movement, but um, okay. if you want to action surge and use that, keep in mind you get once one of those per short rest. This essentially gives you an extra action on your turn. If you want to use that, you don't have to. Uh, I'll I'll hold off for now. Okay. Cool. So, it is now the troll's turn. Ah. Oh, no. Woo! And, um, since Crispin, who already, uh, you know, predicted that this would happen, is right in front of him. Bring it. <laughs> uh, he's going to multi-attack one with its bite, one with its claws, and one with its arm Jesus. cannon. All right. It's cool, I got my parry up. Okay, so the bite is an 18. Which doesn't hit because I'm parrying right now. Beautiful. Sweet. Uh, so this creature bends down, and you see its teeth are mostly crystals. Um, not anything that an orthodontist would be proud of uh, in terms of the size of the teeth and their al alignment. But... Um, Pretty beautiful. I mean, if you're going to have grills that are crystals. Uh, okay. 
And this one is a 20, not a natural 20 to hit. That does hit. Okay. It's going to be... Um, 10 points of slashing damage. Uh, and that is it uh, for that slash. And then you see its arm, which doesn't isn't really a claw like its other arm that just hits you. It turns down and kind of points it at you. And you see the crystals in its body kind of jut out, kind of light up down its arm a couple times before you see uh, these <coughs> arcane missiles shoot out of this arm. And... Uh... That's at me as well? Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's not good. That's not good either. Uh, five. For who? For all of us. <laughs> um, okay, that's going to be only eight force damage as uh, three missiles shoot out of its arm at you. And um, then um, as its arm was lighting up and kind of uh, sh just powering up this arm cannon that it has, uh, it stops, but then... Its center mass starts glowing, and um, that's going to be a D100. Where's my D100? Uh-oh. And we'll use the two previous... Actually... Um... You guys rolled a 19 and a 20 on those Arcana checks, right? Yeah. I got a 19, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got a 20. Yeah, we'll say you have in your studies or your uh, experience have heard about or seen uh, wild magic uh, surges and just kind of how they give off this essence when it starts when some of these wild magic surges happen, they give off these uh, waves of energy before they go off. So let me check this. And wild magic is basically like it will shoot at someone and something random is going to happen? Not necessarily shoot at someone. It, it may turn itself into something. Uh, ah. it, it may uh, grow daisies out of its eyeballs. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like a random effect. Okay. Yeah. So, as this is going on, it it juts out this energy, and then you see this creature grow even bigger uh, to nearly double its tw already 20-foot height. Oh, so now it is oh. nearly 40 feet tall, much Jesus. bigger. And, I don't want to be standing next to it anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to have to change some of these calculations. Um, uh -oh. And that is its turn... Uh, yeah, so who's next? It's going to be Nihilus. Um, okay, uh, I want to try something here sure. uh, to kind of help us, give us a little leg up here. Um, I want to cast um, Fog Cloud just around him so that we can see where he's at, but he can't see where we're at. Unless you're in melee with... Uh... Yeah, well, I guess this mostly helps the spellcasters. <laughs> You're used to it. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, I want to do that. Just like he's, I know he's super tall, uh, but um, I want it centered around like his head. So at least like his vision is obscured. So he's like a, a mountain with a, uh, the, the peak is covered in a cloud. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, for sure. Perfect. Let me just double check 20 foot radius sphere of fog. Cool. And uh, remember you're concentrating, so that is your turn. It lets out a roar. Again, you guys can't understand it, but lets out a roar. Um, just saying, Frick, what? Oh, God, I can't see a thing. All right. So, do you have anything else you want to do? Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, Quick question: If I'm concentrating, does that mean I can't do another spell? If it's a concentration, 
if it's a um, concentration spell, then you it will stop the fog cloud concentration, and you will begin concentrating on another, on that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't. But think you can't do I... in terms of bonus actions like. Well, because I, I want I would like to cast um, my spirit weapon, my spiritual weapon. Cool. That's a bonus action. Uh huh. Cool. Do and it. um. Okay, so I'm gonna cast my bonus action. I mean, my spiritual weapon. It's gonna be a scythe, and then the blade is gonna be in the shape of a dolphin. <laughs> Beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it makes that noise when it swings. Yes. <laughs> and now it does. Um, that is that is uh, canon. Um, I'm always <laughs> shocked at spiritual weapon. Oh, that's such a good damn. A damn good spell. I know, it's one of my favorite ones. <sighs> Alright. Okay. It is now Orson's turn back to the top of the round. Okay, so I'm assuming the Oblex that I turned into sheep is not anywhere near here. No. Uh, it had... doesn't know where you... It had a sheep's intelligence. Okay. Alright, so it just wandered to grace. Okay, so... um. I'm just going to make this simple. I um, use Eldritch Blast because it's a cantrip. Hell yeah. Do All it. right. Roll that attack on it with the d20, and then we'll see where it yep. goes from there. All right. Um, dirty 20. Perfect. Yeah, that hits. All right. What color and... is Orson's Eldritch Blast? Um, it is the... It is... Uh, Brownies is like black. This... <laughs> Actually, it's probably like a very... Very bright blue. I don't know why bright blue. It just kind of is. And um, since he's fifth level, there's two beams. So, um, so let me roll. Oh, okay. So the total is 17. For the second one? Because didn't you roll for this first one with the dirty 20? Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let me roll the second beam. Uh, that one did not... Yeah, that one was a 10, so... So the first one hits, and the damage on that is... was... Uh, the damage on that, if we take that away, that was 10. Okay. So... Bright blue beam. What, do you have a focus? Uh, an, uh, casting focus? Or how are you... Um, how are you channeling this Eldritch energy um like so he has a pendant around his neck oh, okay and the pendant oh is of this like of this glowing bone which he doesn't completely understand why he has it but he knows it works that's the most important thing right okay um just so you know nihilus also has a not it's not a pendant but it's a crystal around his neck that's how he uses his magic he can bond uh mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys, while this is happening, the troll with the cloud around its head is, um, you can see that similar uh, lighting up of the crystals is trying to happen, and this troll is screaming while it's getting hit, uh, and the townspeople are gone. They're still yelling about, where's the wheelbarrow for some reason, and someone's yelling, no, Dave didn't have it last, and... Uh, <laughs> And they're like, you would say that, Dave. Just, of course you would say that. And um, then Dave goes, no, Richard had it last. I gave it to him. And so that's still, argument still going on in the town. And um, this energy, though, in this troll, it doesn't seem to be uh, doing what the troll wants. I'm not going to make you do an insight check. But suffice it to say, um, things didn't recharge. Uh, okay. Is that your turn, Orson? That's it? That's it. Prodi. Prodi also takes his rod out, and he fires a black beam of crackling Eldritch Blast energy. Eldritch Blast. First, the first beam, I got an 18, and oh, yeah. but, but then I rolled zero damage. So it would be two, <laughs> two Wait, damage. What? How do you roll oh, zero damage? You you rolled a one. Is I that what you're... zero? 
Yeah. Oh, a zero on a D10. Oh, 10. yeah, that's a 10. Oh, a 10. sorry, yeah. So Max great. damage. You did a great job. A 12. He's <laughs> felt very modest about his damage. And then uh, the second beam uh, misses by a long shot. I rolled a three. Okay. So. Yeah, the, the troll gets hit by this crackling black Eldritch energy. And at first it's like, oh, that didn't hurt. And then it goes, ah, the ten, zero's a 10. Okay. <laughs> and um, that's his turn. Chris Ban. Oh, well, I'm going um, to... As a, sorry, as a bonus action, I want to use uh, uh, healing on Crispin. Yeah. Ooh. Aww. So uh, what do you think, Proddy? You think Proddy's just intuiting uh, that... Oh, right. Since I mean... Doesn't know him. Yeah. Well, Proddy's a... Fight. Proddy's a... Yeah. A, a smart cookie. Uh, I don't think it's far. You did see me hit the troll, yeah. and then the troll hit me back. It's not like Crispin yeah. ran past the thing and is running towards you guys. So I think it's a, probably a fair assumption. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on a second. I'm trying to find it on my sheet. Uh, if nothing see. else, heal that guy so the troll keeps hitting him. And so then... I will roll a <laughs> d8. Eight. Nice. So, yeah, I cast Healing Light on... Uh, stranger anything you nice. say to him telepathically i say hey sorry to be in your head man but just want to help you out this troll is huge you didn't know uh kenku could do that uh crispin but you just heard i didn't even know it was the kenku <laughs> fair enough yeah it was just the voice in my head um so it's eight heal just eight yeah eight okay awesome thank you perfect Crispin. Okay, now I'm going to try to hit it again with my phone. Hopefully not going to nat one. Uh, that's a 14. Not quite. Not quite. All right, coming back around with a punch to the face. Better mod 20. Yeah. Wrong die. And that does nine points of damage. Beautiful. I'm going to burn a key and do flurry of blows to hit it two more times. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, that's another mod 20 for 7 points okay and then a uh, kick to the groin for that's a 25 yeah. for 5 points uh, we'll say it's like his shin I don't. can you reach his groin sure. uh, oh I guess if he's 20 well I mean I'd have 40. to do like a backflip he's but... 40 feet you're basically <laughs> unloading on his shin Well, if his groin is like uh, probably like 8 feet up I could like bicycle kick that <laughs> yeah, you're a monk. You're athletic enough. Yeah, for sure. You do maybe you do like a little parkour thing, jumping from one leg to another, and then bicycle kick the. Uh... Yeah, I'm pu punching the kneecaps and then bicycle kick the groin, okay. um, and then I'm gonna run away and move back fifty feet. Okay, how much was that groin again? The groin shot. Five. Okay. So you see this human, Crispin. You don't know his name, obviously. Uh, just unload on this beast, and the beast screams out in pain. And Nihilus and Prada, you are reminded of your good buddy Aradia doing similar things, um, but maybe, yeah. you know, talking about books more uh, while she's doing it. Uh, <laughs> and, um, okay. While I was swinging, I, I also, like, I'm talking while I'm delivering these blows, and I say, I've never seen a mouse fight! Yeah. <laughs> I think I was immediately fighting. offended. <laughs> and Crispin, little, I don't like to do this, but you definitely think that that's the cutest little fighter you've ever <laughs> seen, and... <laughs> no, Nihilus is pissed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, as I'm running away, I'm like, I'm supposed to find you! And then I'm 50 <laughs> feet away from you. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. Ashwin, it is your turn again. This beast just grew a ton. Dang it. Um, so this time, can I try climbing him? Yeah. Use your action to climb. Um, let me look at your... You asking if you could climb him last round is probably my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Yeah, you want to use athletics to sure. climb? Go ahead and roll a yeah. d20. Where is my DM screen? There it is. Uh, dirty 20. OK. 
Okay. One second as I pull up this virtual DM screen that's not loading. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm just going to improvise it since this doesn't want to uh, load real quick. Um, we'll say you, so dirty 20 in this thing's. Yeah, so your climb speed is, uh, what's the climb speed DMs in the group again? The default, you guys remember? Brian or, oh, did we freeze? Did I freeze? Oh, oh. Hello. Hello. Hello, what happened? Oh, there we go. Yeah, that was weird. It's kind of like a everything burp. died. <laughs> what is happening? What happened? This is not you part were bringing of bringing up a DM screen and everything died. This is not part of the wild magic surge. I promise. <laughs> um, okay. Did what? I miss anything? <laughs> yeah. What did you guys last hear before something happened? Yeah, yeah, we, we, uh, we talked about right? how. That's what he heard, right? <laughs> we talked about how cute Ashwin was again. Oh my God! Here yeah, we, we go did. again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you definitely have no problem climbing it because you rolled a dirty twenty on that athletics check, and uh, we will say that. And your your uh, speed is twenty five for mouse folk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you make it up around its above its waist. Uh, we'll say, just because you're a fighter and I want to see this happen and it's a beautiful sight in my mind. Uh, <laughs> so you're up there and do you want to use an action surge or do you want a bonus action or what would you like to do? Use your movement and um, your action to uh, climb this writhing and roiling beast. Uh, I was going to use my second action and just attack it. Uh, I th believe you have to attack to get that second, um, with your extra attack, um, meaning okay. you, you would have to physically harm or use your weapon to then get your extra swing. Uh, Got it. Then I have action surge. Cool. And attack it instead. Beautiful. Uh, you are on it, and you have your rapier out. Go ahead and roll your two rolls. Action surge. That's a roll the 19. Yep, that'll hit. Or eight plus six, eight plus six. Fourteen. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You're you're good. Uh, and your second attack. Um. Uh, twenty-three. Yep. Wow. That... Yeah. Fighter time. <laughs> For twelve. Okay. Wow. Remind us what Ashwin looks like again. Uh, she is like a two foot um, brown mouse. Uh, she has like a gold hoop in one of her ears and she's wearing um, like a leather chest armor. So you guys see this. And a rapier and a bunch of weapons, sorry. Yeah, you see this mouse as she described climb up this, this uh, troll extremely quickly pull out her rapier and just go to town on this thing's kidney. Troll kidney? Crystal? Sure. We'll say the anatomy of a troll is similar to humans we'll establish, I guess. Uh, j just stabs it with its rapier, and this thing is definitely Maybe bloodied. Troll dialysis. Yeah. Uh, definitely bloodied, and while she's doing this, some, some pieces of crystal are falling off. You guys would have seen when other people hit that pieces of crystal were falling off, not causing any uh, damage or anything, uh, but yeah. Okay, and that's Ashwin's turn, I think. 
And yes. that is, it is now the troll's turn. And, okay, so it's going to, so Ashwin is on it. Crispin's still down there. Um, and I'm that, 50 feet away, though. Oh, you're 50 feet away. Thank you for uh, yeah. reminding me. Uh, so it's just Ashwin who's close, right? I think so. Yeah. And uh, Nihilus, Prodi, and Orson, you have not moved away or closer or anything? Um, I think at the beginning when we were firing Witch Bolt, we should have been within 30 feet, so I'm going to say I'm 30 feet away. Okay. The creature is going to m run towards these uh, Eldritch, what it la where it last thought the Eldritch energy was coming from. And Fog Cloud gives the Heavily Obscured. I'll be right back. I yep. can still hear, though. For sure. Oh, that's what that little C is next to the name? That means it's a concentration spell? Yep. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to roll, see what happens. So it makes its way towards you, Proddy, and it is swinging away. It can't really, you have the benefits of total cover, essentially, um, and it can't see you, but it's going to swing away anyways, so that's disadvantage. Nope. Nope. Wow. Wow. Nope. So, <laughs> both it's a twelve and eleven to hit. That's not your armor class, is it, Prodi? Uh, armor class is twelve. Ooh, want the uh, the uh, claw hits then. That was with disadvantage. Ah. You gotta get some uh, some armor or, or something. Some magic. Yeah, I, I always forget to cast mage armor on myself or something. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. What's the damage? Yeah, I am. Uh, I was futzing around with the wrong screen. It is 18 points of slashing damage as it wildly swings at you. Um, and it is. Shoots off its arm cannon wildly in the air as a similar effect happens as the, the magical energy shoots down its arm before it releases some missiles. And that's its turn. Uh, does Fog Cloud go with its head? Uh, I assume. Um, like if it I moves? Think I can move it. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Do, 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 do. You create a 20 foot radius sphere so the sphere around corners of pa, pa, pa. it lasts for duration or until wind of modern it doesn't say it moves yeah. um, we'll just I don't want to go through uh, rolling for it again without disadvantage so we'll just say it's now the fog is not on its head because it moved and that will unless okay. you move it it will that's fair okay uh, nihilus. Okay, uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to cast a level three magic missile, so that gives me five darts. Um, and it. so Nihilus, uh, his crystal starts to glow. He puts his hand over the crystal, and he absorbs some of the energy and shoots out his hand that way. Um, and then let me roll. It was almost cleric-like, except that, you know, he's not praying to a god. He's praying to himself, kind of. Yeah, Nihilus is very uh, self-centered. Um, okay, so let me add this up. This is uh, 8, 10, 11, 13, 18 damage. Hell yeah. Doing work. This thing is looking hurt real bad. And then I'm going to take a bonus action to swing my weapon at it. So it's can how far can the spiritual... It's 30 feet away from where the spiritual weapon was last cast so how what's its movement um oh 20 feet 
And it can hit a creature within five feet of it, so it won't make it. Yeah. Can I move closer? You can move the weapon closer, for sure. Uh, oh, wait, the weapon has to move, not just myself. Okay, I'll just move the weapon closer. Okay, yeah. Do it, and then it'll just float there. Cool. Going... <laughs> Uh, yes. Just a little higher pitched, but yes. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> Orson, it is your turn. Let me roll for recharge. Right. Negatory. All right. Um, more Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. More Eldritch Blast. Let's see if they connect. First one. Oh, nat 20. Okay, that connects. Yep, double your dice. That you roll Double for damage. Light. Okay, and my second beam um, would be a 19. Okay. So, yep, yeah. Both. Both. Okay. So, my first one with the double dice uh, hits for 15. And my second one hits for 4. Beautiful. Nice work. And you doubled that the crit damage. Um, yep, by okay. double the perfect. Oh, uh, is that wait? You mean double the crit damage or like roll twice? I mean, you could do. You, most people just um, roll the normal dice and just double that. So, like, if it's one d ten, you roll an eight. Most people will just double the eight and. Oh, uh, okay. But I mean, if you rolled it twice, that's fine as well. Uh, I rolled it twice and. It's okay, fine. perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it is now Prodi's turn. Parati's, uh he's not feeling good after that, that hook. Um, did it, like, impale me, or...? He just it... got you with the tip of a uh, a giant uh, claw that... Uh, he got me with the tip. He just tipped you and got a few feathers on his claw now. Uh, i kind of wobbling with my rod, and I, I'm just like... Eldritch Blast. Oh, I, I rolled a I rolled a one and then a four <laughs> for my for my hits. So he's just spraying black. <laughs> it's like one, it's like not even. It's like ten, ten feet out on both sides. He completely misses. <laughs> he's like ah, oh. and then he casts Healing Light on himself. Do you think he um, heals a little bit? Do you think he's when he's saying all those things? Is he just saying it to himself, or is he telepathically projecting <laughs> that? To... Uh, I think I was... the rest of us just hear. Caw, <laughs> That's. Uh, I'm just I'm just rolling my uh, healing, so I heal for six. I wonder what Prodi does. Prodi caw. Yeah, I've been calling for a while. All right, just, just for, <laughs> I needed a refresher. Yeah. Okay, so you healed yourself. And Crispin. And so when right. you when you ran away, did you run back into town or did you? Yeah, so I ran back the way I came. So it's now further away from me if it went to the party. Okay. Um, which I'm fine with. Totally cool with being that far away from it. <laughs> um, I drop my useless flail, just let it fall to the ground. Um, and I unsling my longbow. From my back beautiful um Ooh. and i'm gonna take two kensei shots Do it. um that's my so that's using my bonus action to make these potentially better shots um so the first one kind of sucks that's <laughs> 12 okay. um and the second one is much better mod 20. yep that'll um, do it so that does additional damage Make sure I did that right, because I've never used this before. Yes. Okay, so that does uh, 10 points of damage, the second shot. Um, and as I shoot, the arrow, as it's flying through the air, you see wisps of like hot, like bright white light energy coming off of the tip of the arrow um, as my key energy makes it sharper. Beautiful. And it hits. Oh, and on that hit, I'm actually going to pump it up with more key do and it. actually burn a key to do another, because I can do that on hit, key, key, another key, two key. points of damage. Okay. And the total on that damage was, again, I'm sorry. I. That's all right. I did it horribly. Uh, <laughs> 9, 10, 12. Okay. 
Uh, and that's your turn. And that, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll stay that far away. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and you, people are still arguing about a wheelbarrow in town, Chris, and you can especially hear it. Uh, um, once Dave started yelling about Richard having it, Richard said, um, that's not my name. You never get my name right. My name is Richardo. Uh, and, uh, and, um, so Richardo's yelling about nobody in town knowing about his name. You guys, I've been here for a few months now, and you still aren't getting my name right. And then uh, a little bit while, once that arrow <laughs> shoots through the air and nails this giant crystalline troll, uh, Dave, you hear the same familiar Dave voice go, Oh, wait, I found it. It's my fault. I had it. Um, and that's where we Classic left off. <laughs> Under my breath while I was shooting, while I was aiming, I'm going, Dave's a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in town a few days. I've heard a few things. <laughs> uh, okay. Ashwin, you are on this thing, holding on. Uh, you, you, you think it's pretty, like it's, it's screams are much less emphatic. They're just. Uh, if you could understand it, it's saying, I'm so freaking tired, I want to go home. But you can't, so. <laughs> You're just hearing troll noises. Uh, what would you like to do, Ashwin? Oh, I'm definitely going to keep attacking it. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. <laughs> go ahead and roll your attack, your d20 attacks. Uh, so that was a dirty 20. Yep, that'll hit. And for 14 damage. Okay. And uh, go ahead and roll your next one. Uh, I don't think it hit. <laughs> it was a 12. So as... Your first hit finds its mark, the same spot you've hit it the last couple times, and the beast starts to sway, and as you're going for your second swing, you uh, the, the creature collapses, and that sudden fall of altitude um, causes you to miss, but the creature is now dead, and you're on its back around its kidney, so I'm going to roll a dice to see, hopefully, that it won't land on you. And it doesn't. It lands on its face. Uh, and you are fine as this giant beast shrinks back down to size. Still a big beast. Uh, and it is dead. Poor guy. Uh, and um, someone in town goes, Damn it, Dave, why do we ever trust you? And... <laughs> We're out of initiative uh, for that fight. Good job, guys. This is a crystalline troll. Um, Nihilus yells, "Who is Dave?" <laughs> <sighs> he's such an ha he's he's the ass. It's he's borrowing the town wheelbarrow and. <sighs> what Dave's did that have to do with anything? Horse's ass. <laughs> what was the wheelbarrow for? <laughs> town wheelbarrow. <laughs> So you guys are going closer back into uh, t into town, I, I assume, uh, because you guys were kind of outside of town. Um, but you're not seeing where these voices are coming from. You assume that they're just hiding around buildings or whatnot, um, uh, and uh, nobody answers your call as they start to resume life. They're peeking around corners, and they're just like, oh, the troll's dead now. Uh, while we were talking about the wheelbarrow. Uh, and so you guys are left with a dead crystal troll and a uh, new member of the party, kind of. Now you guys haven't addressed that yet, but um, uh, feel free to do so now if you'd like. As you're walking back towards town, um, since I was in that direction already, um, I'm standing where I was, facing back into town, uh, adding my voice to the yells of how useless Dave is. Um, <laughs> just shouting to the town. <laughs> Dave's the worst. 
And, uh, yeah. So, what would you guys like to do? Uh, other... I telepathically just say, hey, man, it's me again, <laughs> the Prodi. Sorry for going into your head. I usually try to warn people before I before I get all intimate like that. But um, my name is Prodi, and, man, you sure know how to kick a troll in the groin. Um, that, was, that was really impressive. I like well, that a lot. Thank you. And uh, that kind of shakes me out of my uh, anti-Dave ranting um, <laughs> as I turn around <laughs> and see you're all approaching. Uh, mighty fine to meet all of you. I, I believe I was sent to, to meet up with you folk because it's right. I, I got a mouse and a bird and a fish and a, and a dude. So uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that's you guys. Um, are you are you the big bedfellows? I get that right. That, yeah, yeah, that's us. <laughs> Yeah, I was working down. But thank you. I'm new, so I'm going with that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was, can anyone uh, harvest this this dead thing with all these crystals? Can we harvest these crystals out of here? So maybe there's some value. Not a bad in idea. It. As you're so saying, he starts trying to pull out the crystals. As you're saying the... that, um, a uh, person is like standing near the the corpse of the troll and he hears you and goes well it's kind of useless now those crystals are are uh are just useless uh you can go ahead if you'd like it as a keepsake you can you can uh take as much as you like but uh they don't have they don't fetch much value and they're not the same crystals that Get sh or used to be shipped out of the Viranal Dominion. Uh, trust us, we've tried. I will what was the wheelbarrow for? Ah, uh, it's just fucking that out. <laughs> out of the carcass. Fair enough. Uh, Orson, <laughs> Orson does his his darndest on this beast. Um, Orson, you are... How strong are you? And do you, you have survival, too. I do have survival. Yeah, I'm not going to make you roll for it. You're fine. Um, All right. And uh, so you're asking the guy, Dave, or Prodi. Yeah. I, I Don't ask Dave. I press to digitate <laughs> a little tiny uh, wheelbarrow in my hand, and I go, what do you need? What? <laughs> are you so you're calling you're not using mimicry or you're telling tele i i'm 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 showing him a a wheelbarrow in my hand i'm precedentating like a little uh-huh like okay and he goes a little wheelbarrow yeah that's a my yeah that's a wheelbarrow not quite <laughs> the size uh we're talking about but uh uh it's pretty fancy magic you got there Mr. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't want to call you Mr. Bird because I feel like that's demeaning in some way, shape, or form. But uh, that's their word. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Uh, thank you. That would have been quicker if I would have said that. Uh, uh, but yeah, we're simpatico on on what I was getting at. Uh, he wants to know what 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 why the drama with the wheelbarrow. Oh, it's just. Fucking Dave just <laughs> hoarding that goddamn wheelbarrow that we got. We got a we got a limited supply of some of that good Viranol crystals, and um, you know that troll we were hoping would uh, would take the the goddamn wheelbarrow full of uh, good crystal and and. Uh, <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> wait, wait. You were you were doing business with it with this here troll? No, we were gonna offer it the damn wheelbarrow, and if fucking Dave wouldn't have been such a shit face, and what? I I'm confused. The troll wanted a wheelbarrow. He eats. We think he eats. He ate. He ate the crystals. Uh. Oh, so you were like paying him off. Uh, yeah, one of us, uh, hopefully, we were hoping it would have been Dave. I'm sure all of us would have hoped it would have been Dave. Would have wheeled it out there, and, and hopefully the troll would have... I don't know how a troll thinks, but, like, I ain't gonna take down a 20-foot troll, so I was hoping Dave would go out there with his wheelbarrow full of crystal, and just, <laughs> he would, uh, the troll would, uh, in troll speak, say thank you kindly, and just 
get on get on getting on and stop bothering uh, us um sir sir uh we'll take our reward yeah it seems to me we uh cleared up a big old problem for you not just today but that troll would have been back too mm -hmm. well uh we we very much appreciate your uh we're willing to to take 10 gold each uh well yeah uh let me uh I ain't, I ain't the mayor or anything, but I can go ask around. This is a very small town of barely, I think we're at about 57 on a good day, people. Uh, but let me try and... Pratty, Pratty Telepathy talks to the big bed fellows, and he's just like, okay, there's only 57 people here. He, he should know which one of them is Alu. Ask him about Alu. Oh, Alu, who's Alu? And I, Take us I, to Alu. I just look at you and go, who the fuck is Alu? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, Crispin doesn't maybe know. Maybe I wasn't included in that. Uh, Crispin, Crispin was told to meet you guys up in Serenity Springs, and you guys would have the rest of the details. Um, Alu is the person we are seeking for, for Max and Venture Ventures. Uh, well, um, so one of you, uh, 10 gold, I doubt we'll be able to come up with 10. What can you give us? <sighs> Do you want information? You heading into the Viranol Dominion? Uh, we can, we can possibly, uh, help you, uh... You seem simple. Um, let's, let's make this, uh... You remember how we were talking about being rude? And, uh, I was trying not to offend, uh, my friend here. And then you went ahead and offended me. Uh, and you look mm -hmm. like a triton. Is that incorrect? That is not incorrect. Okay. How do you know tritons? Because I am not the simple-minded person you might think i am and i have been places i have read things as well you and you are fitting over a wheelbarrow and you are fitting into the stereotype that was put forth in some of the books i have read about tritons uh we are amazing and everything you read is true and you continue to do so as you open your lips and flap those gums so <laughs> uh sir i do wish to speak with one of your other uh compatriots here mm. uh maybe i that... just turn around and walk away <laughs> my goodness uh cutie number three <laughs> <laughs> that is so rude <laughs> well aren't you the cutest <laughs> you <laughs> You were like and dangerous. You are. You did a number on that. That oh, fell. Don't worry about it. It was for free. Oh, you see, it sounds like, man. I wish there was some way you could show people who are acting a fool how to act with people they have just met. You are the cutest. Uh, but I'm going to find something that I can give you you uh, people here uh, for your fine work. We do appreciate it, of course. Uh, like, why why would we not be uh, grateful for such a, a fine uh, showing of of strength and arcane prowess? So, um, well, how how about we start with this? Uh, we have some business to discuss, me and my uh, associates here. Um, how about just a, a round of uh, drinks on the house? Yep. Uh, what what we discuss, and then we can uh, kind of reconvene and, and and come up with something that's uh, fitting oh, for our needs. I have the just world. the thing. I have just the thing. I will be back. And he walks back into town and enters a tavern, and you guys are left alone for a little bit to talk. Watch him come back with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> so how do you guys want to go about finding this guy, Alu? That's the whole point of us being here. We could shout and talk. <laughs> that kind of works. I'm down uh, with that. Well, I do apologize. I'm a little in the dark. So we're looking for this man, Alu. I was sent up here to find you, Venture Ventures, and all that good stuff to help you out with a job. Um, what what's the job other than finding this guy? Why who is he and why we're we looking for him? 
You know, I rarely pay attention, but um, <laughs> we have to uh, find this guy. We were hired uh, by Trick Nips, was it? No, but Max. <laughs> Ma oh, no, maybe well, it, could Max be, is the... it could be Trick Nips. I don't know. Through Max. I don't know. I wrote it down somewhere in my notes. It was, it was uh, Beta Skrieg. Uh, Beta, that's oh, right. Beta, who Beta works, hired us who, to go find Alu. Who works for who Felix, yeah. We're, we're try he works for Felix Tricknips. Exactly. I connected them somehow. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so it's this man that we got to go find, uh, except we found some kind of a weird gooey creature in a cave instead. An Oblex. And, mm -hmm. uh, ah, I see. Yeah, you guys would have known that for because you had those interactions with the Oblex in Anista on the sh shore, the, the shore there. Um, yeah. They describe to you that um, when they kill someone, something, for sustenance or pure evil, whatever it may be, they have the ability to create simulacrums of that person and they absorb the, the, uh, the creature itself. And except when you were talking to Alu back there, uh, this one seemed very almost broken, like it was, um, like it was had a damaged brain or something, like it didn't fully uh, transpose its what it what it attacked onto itself. So that would lead you to believe that probably Alu might be dead, but his reasons be for being sent there, or he might be alive. But his reasons for being sent there, regardless, are, um, you know, they haven't, they haven't been met. Like, uh, does that make sense? No, I've been in town a few days. Um, I obviously wasn't looking for a Lou or sure anything because I didn't know the name. Yep. Uh, but what I have heard of a Lou being in town, passing through, since it's a very small place, like strangers <laughs> passing through would probably make a splash this is the end of the line on the arcane train that runs from west to east uh, about 800 miles or so and so people this is specifically made by felix uh trick nips there's no other reason for it to stop here other than that this is the closest entry point to the viranol so that's how he would get some of these crystals that he's made uh warforged with uh these crystals aren't it's pretty well known, like, oh, Felix Tricknips made another crazy, cool invention. He's probably using those crystals again type of thing. Uh, so it's not it's not uh, hidden knowledge that uh, these crystals come out of the Viranol. It's just the Viranol is known to be a creepy place. It was a hermit kingdom for a long time before the Erasure. And then um, limited entry into the Dominion and uh, exits as well. So having a new person in... People would be like, "It's not that outlandish." It's not outlandish at all, but um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, I have an idea. Well, uh, we did just get into a big fight. Some of us might need a place where we could do a short rest, and then we will try to find. Well, if Alu is dead, then maybe his family. Then we could talk to them, figure out where Alu is, pretend we don't know where Alu is. But we'd like to talk to their family because they have apparently really good food and we want to try their food. We're going to make this up. Okay. I like well, the plan. I, I, I suggest cashing in on that uh, free drink we got going on and we can sit down, take a breather uh, and over, the in, over in yonder tower. We want the drinks. Tavern. Yes. So and the drink. About that time, the gentleman you were talking to returns with uh, an armful of these bottles uh, from uh, that are unfamiliar to any anything that you've seen in any city. And he's smiling. He's got a, uh, a smirk on his face. And he, and he approaches and goes, You guys, everyone has agreed that you do deserve some of our finest liquor. And I promise you that you have not had this because they do not allow it to be exported out of this here town. The gnomes do do uh, the gnomes who make it do not 
permit it to be exported. But here you go, and he hands you these, it looks like they're in similar, uh, slightly smaller Jack Daniels bottles. And um, uh, they're called a Derman's Whiskey. And uh, it's a pretty plain label. And he explains that uh, this was this town, Serenity Springs, was settled here uh, quite a quite a while ago uh, by gnomes. And I don't know if you have, of course, you've you've heard of the Sand Wheel Sea to the east, and you have heard of it. It's um, to the east of Enver, uh through the swamps, just an expansive desert. Uh, it's called the Sand Wheel Sea. And, um, but you might not have heard of these gnomes. And he explains that these gnomes settled here from the Sand Wheel Sea, uh, they're very particular that they are not gnomes with a G, they are gnomes with a D. And, uh, silent, of course. Um, anywho, this is the whiskey they brought from the, their, uh, original, uh, place of, uh, Creation, for lack of a better term. Nah, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Did you just say uh, gnomes with a D? <laughs> uh, yes, sir. I do understand. That, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, uh, it is a little. Uh, uh, as my, I go British. Uh, a, a little <laughs> bit uh, <laughs> confusing. Uh, where does the D go? So it goes where the G would go. Is there also a G? No, no G. The 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 G. They're very particular. None of them are here at the moment, but uh, they like to make sure that people do not bunch them with the G. The G gnomes. They are that's, the uh, D gnomes. <laughs> that's good. That's good to know. I guess uh, I'll uh, keep that in mind if I come across any uh, gnomes or gnomes uh, in uh, the future. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I do apologize. The, the, uh, the G and the D are still silent. Um, uh, sure, sure. Uh, oh, were you? I'm sorry. Were you making a, a joke? I am. Uh, sometimes I can be a bit slow if I am being honest. Uh, hmm. So. Uh, Anyways, the whiskey here is mighty fine, and this is for you, and if you would like to um, stay overnight, we can accommodate that, um, and, and the sun is down now, uh, so what do you... Yes, uh, we, we would like a place to sleep, but also a place to drink this whiskey. Oh, yes, you can head on over. I'm getting a little feedback. Uh, from someone as my as I keep this uh, he he introduced <laughs> himself as Magnus he's a human um, with a dirty mustache uh, pretty what does that mean dirt like as in it looks dirty like there's dirt <laughs> okay <laughs> like I wasn't sure if you bet like no you it, can yeah uh, I understand like the color of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I understand what you're saying like if it's like a thin like pencil uh, I understand. Uh, it, no, oh, it's, I wasn't it's, going that dirty. It's literally dirt-filled. Mm -hmm. um, and he takes you over to... It does nothing to help Nihilus' opinion of him. Oh, I, I don't doubt it. Uh, mm -hmm. He takes you to the Wizard and the Shadow Tavern, and that's where he you saw him go in to retrieve these bottles. And... Uh, it's basically a house that was converted into a pub and um, pretty small uh, area, low ceiling. You think uh, maybe that's because the original uh, creators of the town were gnomes. They didn't feel the need to make expansive uh, cathedral ceilings. Um, but you guys will be fine because the tallest person at Crispin, how tall are you? Six, Six feet. foot. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's dirty, like a Wild West town, but it is a tavern to drink, and there are chairs and round tables. And uh, feel free to take a seat. I tell the group I'm I'm fine with drinking and talking, but I'm gonna need a good thirty minutes or so uh, off by myself, and I I, I go. Uh, 
well. sit, sit on a stool and kick up my feet on a table and pull my hat down over my eyes <laughs> um, and, and cradle my bottle of whiskey uh, while I meditate and get my key back. <laughs> okay. That's my, that's my meditation pose. <laughs> And, then, and and now that you got a good look at me, like there's there's the three headed flail hanging on one hip, and then I have a coiled up whip on the other hip, um, and the long bow and quiver slung across my back, along with like a, a shoulder bag. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm dressed very light clothing, very like easy cloth, light stuff, um, and I'm just kind of settling down with my booze <laughs> in the corner of the the small bar. Perfect. Orson yeah. sees what Crispin is doing and decides to follow suit. He's like, this is a good idea. And he also <laughs> tries to find a corner, you know, sort of close to Crispin, so he's not <laughs> like weird. Um, kind of like in fetal position, putting the former cat over his eyes, trying to pass out to do a short rest. Fetal and, position. <laughs> and, yeah, fetal position, drinking on his bottle of whiskey like a baby, just like chugging it slowly. And passing out. And uh, yeah, what what are the rest of you all doing? Uh, Prati, I mean, I assume there's like NPCs around. Like... Uh, it's a very empty bar. There's one uh, person behind the bar who greeted you and was. Yeah, thankful. Prati goes and talks to the bartender. Okay. He he, um, I guess he does like an impression of Vlav, and he's just like. And you this guys, is, this is the last known location of <laughs> Alu. Uh, yes, perfect imitation. And now that <laughs> you guys uh, are, are have mentioned Velov, wait, you, where is Velov? <laughs> you don't see him around. Did he just leave us? You didn't see what happened. I, I, uh, at the beginning when you guys were heading towards the town, he fell. He fell back as I described, and. Um, uh, that was the last you saw of him. Coward. Uh, but, uh, so the, the man says, Hey there, I am Samuel Whitney. This is my establishment. Um, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, but, um, you mentioned, so Alu is, Alu, and he's thinking... And uh, I don't. That name does not ring a bell. I am. I promise you. I am doing my my darndest to recall what. No, Alu does not ring a bell. Is there anything else uh, about him that may help me with my memory? Of... Um, I'm gonna walk up to the situation. And uh, I'm going to ask Prati, Prati, are you able to, like, press to digitate an image of him? I've never seen him, right? I don't... You saw, you saw. Well, we the... say, okay, we got a picture. Yeah, sure. No, no, you well, saw we, what we... the Oblox, Oblex. Uh... Oh, yeah, right. So I can do an Oblex version of him. So, uh-huh. yeah, I press to digitate. Do you have uh... Minor Illusion? I feel like Minor Illusion would do it, not press digitation. Oh, uh, well, I keep on. I, get, I guess, thing. yeah, because press digitation is for simple objects. So, yeah, I did a oh. wheelbarrow, but. A I'll face probably is probably simple. yeah. So I don't have I don't have minor illusion. I don't think. Okay. Can I attempt to draw a picture of Alu yeah. on a napkin? Yeah. Make okay. a um. You're not. Uh, let me see. What could I do? Performance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Actually, good. Good call. Um, make a performance check. Ooh, that's a nat twenty. Yeah, you impress yourself. You're like, I don't recall I could draw this well. Of course, you're not saying that to anyone because no, you're, no, you're just, I'm yeah, showing it off. Yeah, what I'm doing. You, you wouldn't act like you're surprised by your own talent. Yeah. Uh, but it's inside. I'm freaking out. Yeah, yeah. You're like, maybe I just gained a power or something. Uh, Prodi's just like, you've been holding out on us. It's no big deal, Prodi. It's no big deal. <laughs> um. And the man says, I cannot say, there was a man kind of looked like him, I guess. You know what? Maybe that is kind of him. Uh, he was going into the Viranal Dominion uh, to find out what was going on. Uh, he did not, like, stay in the town much at all. He got off the train and pretty much uh, headed out. He was outfitted 
Um, stopped here for for a drink before he went in, and uh, uh, that was about it. Uh, we we ain't heard from him though since. If that's the man, yeah, that's a fantastic drawing, by the way. Oh, thanks. I uh, I do sell these. If you want to put it up on the wall. Well, of this gentleman, I do not think I, I would. Uh, if you would like to draw a scene mm -hmm. of the current situation in my establishment with these two gentlemen uh, sleeping. Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> so he wants, he's telling you he wants like, you know, like a, uh, a setting of, of uh, the bar with, Crispin, uh, Clint Eastwood napping, and uh, Orson uh, in a fetal position. <laughs> I don't know what to call on it. The, uh, on the ground next to me. <laughs> yeah. So he says, "Yeah, I will." Uh, you want like I I can give you some more alcohol or sure maybe like the the round is on the house. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to attempt to draw this thing. <laughs> Not going to get a net 20 again. Ooh, but it's a total of 21. Yeah, it is. It's it's pretty darn close. It's canon. Here. I'm a great artist. Uh, you keep, make sure you tell your dice that, too, um, that you're a great artist. Uh, and he is... Samuel is very happy with the results. And Is this jogging any more of your memory, Samuel? Uh, well, did, you didn't draw a loo on it. He didn't. He didn't want a loo in it. But but maybe my oh no you being so impressed. Oh no, would, you can do. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, if you want to do, he says no. Like, uh, he's very apologetic. Nihilus, um, uh, ask him where, like, where we need to go to follow a loo. Like, is there just one road that we could just walk down that would head deeper into the Dominion to to find him or? Is there like, did he, did he go with like a group or you know, are there like uh, crystal miners that we should be looking for? My my handsome uh, Kenku friend here says, and then I just sure say everything he says. Uh, okay, pull up the map. Yes, you will. Uh, it's a pretty. Once you go in there, you guys came out of that cave to the north there. Uh, mm -hmm. A little a little bit south there is a a gate. Uh, uh, excuse me, a trailhead uh, that says uh, the Tukor Trail. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly because the, the Viranol spell things and have that accent that <laughs> is super mm. hard to do. Uh, anyway, the Tukor Trail, you'll, you'll see it, and you'll just follow that right in uh, to the Viranol. Uh, yeah, and that'll lead you right in there. And the first town, I believe, is called, uh, Pruyets. Yes, I've heard of this. It's where he's from. It's where Alu's from? Right? I don't know. Sounds good to me, though. I say we take that short rest and start walking that way. And, okay. Um... Uh, bef uh, Ashwin, what were you doing during that uh, while these two are sleeping or napping and meditating and these two are talking at the bar? Just listening to their conversation. So you're at the bar with them? Yes. Okay. She's sitting on the stool, but she you still can't see her <laughs> Perfect. over the bar. <laughs> two round ears. Just yeah, that. just like the tips of her ears. <laughs> One thing is being taller than me. <laughs> and um, uh, Samuel, the bartender and owner, would have said to you before when he was describing what he want, wanted uh, drawn, he would have said, can you add her cute little ears poking out at the bottom of the the uh, picture? Just They're like, not that cute, but I will add them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they are, but you will admit they are cute. <laughs> Um, I will not admit that, uh, <laughs> but we will. We are going to thank you for your information. We're going to go to sleep now. Okay, uh, Orson. While you were napping, mm -hmm. um, 
you fall into a deep sleep and you find yourself staring out across the plains to a similar, it may be the same, you're not sure if it's the same sunset you had just witnessed while you were uh, leaving the cave and approaching the troll and fighting mm -hmm. the troll. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the distance, there's rolling hills and, and uh, on these plains that you're looking out, and it's vibrant orange backlit uh, plains. You see a silhouette of a creature crusting the hill, and so you're getting more of the silhouette, and you're you're pretty darn sure you being a a pig farmer mm -hmm. that that is the silhouette of a pretty damn big hog. Oh shit! <laughs> crusting that hill that's backlit. Of course, it's pretty far away, and you can't see any. Uh, so especially being backlit, you can't see any any uh, details. But mm -hmm. uh, so it comes to the top of the hill, pauses, and starts walking across your vision of your, of this dream or vision you're having, and mm -hmm. um, pretty quickly. What's your intelligence? I. Uh... Intelligence is an 11. Okay, not bad. Uh, yeah. You're definitely positive. I was just worried it was going to be like a 7 or something. Um, <laughs> you're positive it's moving at an incredibly quick pace faster than you've... You, no pig can move that fast. Uh, mm. It's still backlit, but it heads on into the Viranol uh, range, and um, mm. you awaken from your nap feeling quite refreshed. Mm. And inspired. Uh... And they're still there. Everyone is still there. Uh, Crispin's still next to you, napping in the chair. I'm uh... awake. Just... Oh, yeah, you're down. meditating, right? Pratty, Pratty climbs up into one of the rafters, and he puts his, puts his head, his hood up, and just takes a nap. That's very intimidating uh, imagery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't going into a room to sleep on a bed. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was just uh, kind of uh, while you guys, this was happening while you also, were talking to Samuel. This is the Samuel. image that he drew for. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Beautiful. I, enc I encourage all podcast listeners to maybe check out the VOD of this episode 20. And witness the glorious artistry that is Richard Cardenas is just beautiful penmanship, I guess. Pen, of, pen art? Of Ashwin, yeah. That's Ashwin. That's how I what, view her. What time of day is it? So it's night. It's nighttime. Yeah, it's nighttime. Uh, so we could just yeah. all take a long rest. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, we, we got room. room so. it, it, yeah, it's all... Yeah, so... Uh, uh, all uh, we're going to bed. <laughs> Yeah, so we just kind of casually say to Crispin, like, oh, yeah, and then we all sleep in the same bed, by the way. <laughs> that sounds mighty fun. <laughs> Warm, hey. at least. Nobody ever has an issue with it, and I'm, just, I'm like, <laughs> even the NPCs I've had you guys with don't have issues with it, really. <laughs> the most normal thing in the world. Uh... Yeah. It's been a while since I traveled with the group, so uh, <laughs> close, I guess you could say. Uh, and you will be led by Magnus uh, to um, kind of the the bed the B and B, uh, and it's on the house, and it leads you to the one bedroom that's upstairs. And there's a big bed up there. It's very quaint, and um, you're provided with everything you need. And uh, if you guys would like to talk before you go to bed or explain more the the bedding situation. Let me know, or we can go to morning time. So how do we do this? Is it the the tall folk on the ends, like bookends, with the small folk in the middle? We we just kind of land where we land. We don't have any rules. Okay, then he, uh, Orson jumps in first. It's like okay, <laughs> arms spread out. It's like all right, I'm here. <laughs> Nihilus like uh, 
uh, crawls up next to Orson and puts his head on Orson's arm. Are you? <laughs> are you in out. the the tub though? No, not the tub okay. this time. Okay. <laughs> oh, and I gotta warn you. Um, I do always sleep with my whip next to me. It's it's for a good reason. If you feel something <laughs> tickling in your ear, listen to that feeling because that means something really fucked up is nearby and it's about <laughs> to eat you. Um, but it is a very gentle tickling in like your ear or something like that. It it means well. I promise. My whip is very nice. It your means whip the is best. alive. Well, uh, kinda, a little bit. It's a it's a Okay. <laughs> it's just it, it's just I'm just warning you. I'm I think everything will be fine in this B&B. It seems like a very <laughs> nice safe place. But it might do that if something's about to happen. Okay. And Howdy. uh Crispin, are you uh unfully undressed like or um, partially undressed like Orson or um, um, I'd be I'd be partially undressed, just bed clothes, more light linens. So no um, I, shirt I like, on. Uh, no, the, it's a linen shirt. Oh, okay. linen <laughs> shirt with like nice loose linen pants for my bedwear. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it That's light and flowy. Karate so, takes takes a few pillows and stacks them up, and he sleeps on top of the uh, of the pillows. He's he's like a four and a half foot crow with no arms. And he uh, puts his cloak over his eyes. A crow with no wings. He has arms. What did I say? Oh, yeah, no arms. Yeah, he has no... Uh, I was wondering how you put the hood up. Um, <laughs> with his feet. <laughs> there's a lot of potpourri in this room. And Why? while you guys... I don't know. Uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, you can ask. Um, but while well, you guys are... flick them out the window. So now there's potpourri on the floor. Uh, out the window. Oh, out the window? Yeah, you're not yes. going to throw dried leaves accurately out the window perfectly. Potpourri is, is hard. They're super light and any amount of... <laughs> I can't believe we're arguing about the... the... <laughs> Athletic check. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the vo no. I'm putting my DM foot down. This potpourri gets everywhere in this room, sir. Uh... <laughs> So there's potpourri everywhere. Um, and Ashwin, you're just going. Ashwin goes in between um, Orson and uh, Nihilus. Just curls up between them in a ball. Okay. Um, and so your so your linen shirt, Crispin, is just and yours as well. Orson is like like a super conservative linen shirt. I'm thinking like. It's like near see through. I mean, we're talking like light beach linen wear. <laughs> so they can see through like to your skin, is kind of what I'm uh, hinting at. Yeah, yeah, they could. Okay, you want to describe yeah, what I they see? see? Like, like so you can. So now that I've changed, um, and it's kind of hard to see because though you can, though it's transparent clothing, it's still obscured a little bit. Um, but over my chest, right where my heart is, uh, there's definitely a dark uh, ink tattoo. Um, if you look closely, you can kind of kind of make out that it's a head or a face of some kind, but it's clearly not human. Um, you can kind of see that. I think you're the only person with a tat here, right? In this group, is that correct? Yeah, I don't. I don't have. I any. don't. Yeah, I don't have a tattoo. Okay. Nothing under the feathers. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, so you guys go off to sleep, and you have a wonderful rest, comfortable unmolested rest uh Jesus. uh i don't know why it shows... the, whip, the whip behaved the whip behaves all night apparently that's okay that's <laughs> that's what i was referring to the way he described it i was kind of like uh, um it's a promiscuous whip anyways you're fine nothing happens uh and uh you guys begin your morning and you have some food at uh, Samuel's place, and uh, if you'd like to talk to him or um, do anything in the tavern, uh, you can. Let me know. Otherwise, I will uh, ask you what you're doing for the day, or if you're heading into the Viranol Range uh, Dominions. Head into the Viranol. I am going to leave one uh, copper for him as a tip. And I'm going to ask Sam uh, one copper. I, no, I, I get the impression <laughs> that... Uh... 
getting into the Varanel Dominion isn't necessarily just like walking across the border. Is there anything we need to be worried about in terms of border crossing? Uh, there is a Tooker Room, uh, Tukor. It's the same name as that damn trail, uh, uh, but it, it's a room where you are supposed to essentially just state your intentions, I've been told. Uh, before you're allowed to enter the Dominion, and that's the extent uh, of it, as far as I know. Is there any uh, catch-alls to that? Like, if you say the wrong thing, you get dropped into a pit of snakes, or...? Oh, uh, not that I uh, not that I know. Um, I've not <laughs> heard of a pit of snakes, although that would be quite disturbing. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to avoid that if I, if I can. Sure, sure. Uh, I understand why. Um... Yeah, I have not heard any anything about traps, snakes, anything like that. Um, or maybe just thrown in jail. I mean, I, I, the pit of snakes was just a creative way to say it. Oh, yes. I have not heard of consequences. But again, it is a very, you know, this isn't uh, Inista or Vera Mall we're talking about in terms of traveling, the amount of people traveling in and out. Uh, so that's that's about the extent to what I know. Uh, All right. Well, thank you kindly for the information. Yeah, um, I would also like to uh, roll insight to see if he knows more than he's telling me. Do it. 17. Uh, you think he's being completely honest. Seems like a straight up guy is not sweet. He's, he's uh, giving you everything. Um, well, I thank him and, and I, I ready myself to leave. Cool. Uh, you guys head off to the range to the east and as i mentioned last episode these it's it's similar to lord of the rings mount doom uh darkness clouds perpetual dusk in the way in which you're heading to the viranol dominion excuse me uh and you climb through this trail Sure enough, as Samuel uh, described, there's a trail marker and uh, it says uh, Tuker Trail. And you spend about a good half day uh, traveling up through the mountains and you're climbing. It's not, it's a, it's not the worst hike, uh, but it's like you guys are going to sleep well tonight. It's, um, it's strenuous. Uh, and you enter, the, the, the mountains are growing around you, and you're entering this this uh, this cave, kind of uh, overhanging mountains, and it's kind of funneling in you into uh, this arched doorway you see ahead of you, and um, it says the Tuka room above it, and um, this is pretty much the only way uh, in as was previous, previously described, and uh, you all head in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, when you enter this room, you go through the doorway, and there's a hallway, <coughs> and it's, it's uh, about 10 feet wide, and it, uh, about 50 feet in, it opens up into this room, and um, this room is just... Full of mirrors um, on all four walls and this there's a central column in the middle of the room uh, when you guys entered it it starts glowing and uh, there's various languages on it um, and uh, it says uh, entering the Dominion requires but a show to tell yourself your true character and what you don't want others to know. For when your mirror self hears it, so does the Viranal, concerned we are not the color of your soul. As long as you show verity to all within this play, you'll find your time more restful, under less affray. And ahead of you in this room, this, this same hallway, just going into the Viranal, it looks like um, there's not much stopping you from just continuing on through the hall, but you nevertheless heard about the room. Uh, I assume, Crispin, you would have said what uh, Samuel... Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what you see in this room. What would you guys like to do? 
Well, after reading that, I'll uh, I step up to a mirror, uh, just so I'm right up, right up next to it, um, and all I whisper to it is, uh, I just say, "Find drilling," what? and then I start walking up uh, towards the hallway out. Okay, and are you trying to hide it from other people hearing you? A little bit. I mean, I I, I say it because I think I have to say it out loud. Um, sure. Uh, so, but I'm not like shouting it. <laughs> yeah, you're a little surprised. I just wanted to know because the room somehow, maybe it's acoustically built in a certain way or it's magically, but your whisper is a lot louder than you thought it would be. Um, <laughs> Got not, it. Not as, in, <laughs> not as in you're yelling, but like if you would have heard yeah. you when you started whispering and you would have heard it, would you have like stopped talking right away? Or... It was so short, probably not. I would have okay. just said it. Okay. Um, so you guys hear that, and then uh, what do the rest of you do? I'm sorry, you whispered fire drilling? <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine. Fine drilling. Fine drilling. Okay. Was that in character, or are you asking Brian? Uh... No, I was asking. It wasn't in character. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me know if you need me to read what the column says, central column says again. I will go to you, Dave. What do you want to do? I walk up to one of the mirrors, and I just go, well, this is tough because I guess the mirror, I have to speak to the mirror like as if I would speak to a regular person, right? Uh, Let's see. Um, I do an impression of, I forget who was in charge of giving us the title of a warden of the Gid Ward. Well, it would have been uh, the wardens uh, of Anista. They said they'd give you a title. Or do you want to know who gave it to you, who, like, delivered the sc- sealed uh, scroll with the actual title on it? No, yeah, the actual person in charge. Oh, yeah, it would have been one of... Th- it would have been Suha or Zahur, one of the two um, gray, yeah. silver... So I use, I use a bunch of different words that they would have said in a different order and i just say as suha i just say like uh i say like suha and uh uh what's ronin or Zahur? What's the other no what's the other sphinx there's a sphinx, oh right? yeah um Devamala? Devamala and roma or Rona. Let me look up their names again. Uh, so I say all their names, and sure. I just say we should have, we should have paid a steeper price for the shenanigans that went on at the orphanage and allowing that 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 coven to go unpunished for so long. You, so we, as in you, or no? I'm saying that like as if, as if I'm like. Suha, I guess I'm saying it as yeah, I'm saying they like Suha. Uh, okay, I can't remember so you, any other names. Fair. <laughs> uh, I understand. I just want to make sure the the important thing is is that you're you're saying um, you're I'm not saying, saying like, anything about yourself. No. Okay. I'm All just right. Saying I believe. I'm just saying like something about me is that I believe that those people should have have gone should have been punished for or at least demoted or something should okay. have, there should have been some retribution for what happened with the orphanage okay uh okay um who is uh would like to go next uh ashwin or or sin what would you like I'll to do next okay um so i'll go next um the first thing uh orson does he's he checks the obelisk because it's written in other languages and he tries to look in Gnomish if it says exactly the same thing. Uh, and it okay. does. It's in various sizes, each oh, okay. each language. So the Gnomish section is uh, kind of towards the top on one side of the column. Uh, but mm-hmm. it says the exact... All of the languages... You have a invocation that allows you to read everything, correct? Yes. Yeah. So every, uh, every language it's written in is... It mirrors the others so it's the same and let me know again okay. if you need me to read it read what it says yeah um i don't need okay. to okay so now that i have a sense of what that is i go to a mirror and i just have this really 
my I draw my eyebrows down. I look really, really mad, and I say I turned all of my enemies into bacon. Then I <laughs> and I try to go through the mirror. Oh, you try to walk through it. Yep. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, you guys hear this? This uh, I t- turn all my energy enemies into bacon you're not like whispering it or anything right you're no, yeah like i'm saying it with this growl and when you, right now, when you when you do that you don't exactly run into a solid surface uh but what happens is you see a spectral hand of yourself kind of reach out and patch patch you on your shoulder um mm-hmm. giving you the sense that uh it's the type of pat that someone would give you, like saying "good job," uh, but you are you you are unable to enter into the same area as that uh, reflection of yourself did. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Ashwin. So I'm. Yeah, go ahead. So I don't actually enter through. I just get like something from the other side of the mirror. Yeah, you kind of. It's not like an abrupt hit, but you definitely meet a solid surface as if you're running into a wall with a mirror. Uh, it's just, unless you're taking a running start at, at it, it's not going to be, um, uh, you know, like running into a wall. Um, is it like kind of like belly flopping into a pool? A little bit. It's, it's a little viscous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. it's, it's more viscous than water is, uh, because it doesn't allow you to, uh, jump in, but yes. Okay. So can I... So even after initial impact, is it possible to, if I kept going, to go through that mirror? You can certainly try. Okay, then it's assumed that I'm going to attempt to go through that mirror, but make, it will take more than an action. Yeah, make a strength check. Strength check? Yeah. Okay. I'm strength check. I'm trying something new where I'm rolling the dice on the app. Fair okay. enough. Yeah, it's like I, I'm not liking this system very much, but um, 13. You don't, you don't like rolling on your table, or is that was that what you mean? Oh, or? no, I, I couldn't find my dice oh. before starting, so I'm like, oh, I just let me just download this app. So I'm like, yeah, it does the job. It just is not satisfying. It's definitely not satisfying. <laughs> I not completely – I have a dice app that's very handy and much faster than rolling on a table, but – it's just not, you're 100% correct. Um, yeah, it's just, eh, so I rolled a 13. Okay, so with a little more force, you try to go, and you guys are all witnessing this. Um, you try to go in there, and it doesn't, you, you feel the same thing, and it and it stops. It stops giving, um, and it oh. does, you're unable to to break the, the uh, seal. I don't know why I chose okay. seal, but uh, don't read into Use of the word seal. Uh, uh, Ashwin. Uh, so, can I touch the mirror? Like, yeah. the, the mirror I'm in front of? Yeah, and you see your reflection is behaving in uh, the way a reflection does, and when you touch it, uh, it feels like a mirror, and your reflection touches your hand, and... Uh, okay, so then... In Squeak Squeak, which is her native language, uh, she says, suck it, Ronaldo, and then goes like this. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, all right. Uh, that's everyone, correct? No, I haven't done Oh, anything. Nihilus hasn't gone? Okay. <laughs> um, Nihilus is just going to approach the mirror, kind of like look straight into it, looking at his own reflection, and he's not going to say anything, uh, but he will cry a single tear. Okay, so you're you're not going to say anything. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Is there anything you guys would say to each other in character about this room or like what it says or have any discussions? I would like to hear what it is one more time. Okay. Uh, entering the Dominion requires but a show to tell yourself your true character and what you don't want others to know. For when your mirror self hears it, so does the Viranal, concerned we are not the color of your soul. 
As long as you show verity to all within this play, you'll find your time more restful under less affray. Got it. Well, we all satisfied with our uh, personal answers to this here riddle? Like I am. Is what I say to everybody. <laughs> I'm satisfied. Well, mm -hmm. I say we uh, make our way out of this out of this room and yep. into the Dominion. Yep. Hopefully, we uh, find some comfortable rest based on our shows. <laughs> and uh, you uh, head out of the uh, two core room. And there's a definite change of atmosphere. You feel like uh, the, it's obvious. It's obvious to you that going into this kind of dusk atmosphere, when you were climbing up through the trail, it makes sense to you that once you got further in, it would become more dark and uh, whatnot. Um, but it's definitely more like the air is thicker, almost like there's humid. It's more humid in this area, and uh, you the the trees are are more close together on this side. Um, all of the branches are touching of this forest you're going through in this mountain range, and you're climbing down through the pass, uh, presumably into this open area that um, is the Dominion. Uh, across the mountain range and um so you're now in this valley and uh the trees are lightening up before you get to a gate uh that has uh it's very gothic uh stylings stone stylings and there's two uh gargoyles on the top with a uh another uh sign, uh, sign's not the word I'm looking for, but, um, it's essentially says, uh, Serenity Gate and, uh, Welcome to the Dominion. And, uh, there's a little guardhouse there, but you can't, uh, you look around and you're not seeing anyone. Um, what would you like to do? The gate's currently closed. It is open. That is a good question. Well, I continue on walking. Okay, nobody's yeah. just... So it's just <laughs> nothing's in my way, so I'm going to keep on so going. So it's just quiet. So you guys are just walking quietly, not making any comments uh, about what you're walking into. Um, uh, I say to the party, like, this This looks like a mighty shitty place. <laughs> <laughs> just, just throwing that out there. I've seen worse... That's Fair it. enough. <laughs> and uh, you guys continue. Uh, nothing seems to bother you as you're into a flat portion of of the valley now. And a few more hours, and you've been traveling most of the day, uh, but you wouldn't know it because you're in a area of Envir that is just about in perpetual dusk. Uh, so... There's not much change throughout the day in terms of light output. Um, but eventually you make your, your way to Prietz. It's a tiny little city. And uh, as you're entering it, you see three houses that are sunken, like a sinkhole has swallowed them. And uh, the road in, uh, next, to, next to the houses that are sunken and kind of swallowed uh, seemingly by the ground is fine, so you have no issue moving into town, but the town is very empty, as in you don't see anyone walking around, meandering around. Uh, some of the houses have boards on them, some of them are, um, have loose shutters, uh, but um, you don't see anything right when you enter the town. At the far end of the town, uh, you do see a little light and a... Um, a, uh, it's a normal house, a small house. You see a light in the window. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of your... If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you want to look around somewhere, or that's kind of what you see. So the three sunken houses, they were all individual sinkholes? They weren't, like, three nearby buildings that, like, were in one big sinkhole? Uh, a, a, a pron 
closer inspection. Um, two of them, it seems, was one sinkhole and then another is a separate sinkhole, but uh, the ground around the holes is untouched, as in it's not a gentle sink. It's um, a hole. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Well, what did I say? It's a <laughs> shitty place. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking around, is there any like public house, tavern? No, you just saw that building. You <laughs> see, you see it. What you think the uh, what you think might have been a tavern at some point, but it's there's no lights on. And it's, it's shuttered. It's shuttered, and there's no sign outside that says like this used to be a tavern or this is a closed tavern or anything like that. Um, but it's like that same style of architecture that a tavern would be. Um, so, so far the only, you see a house and then there's probably a half dozen houses uh, and buildings and such that are either shuttered or not shuttered, but there's no light in the other ones. Just the one? Just the one. Hmm. Well, I suppose we should go check that one out, but uh, <laughs> I'm getting the creepy vibes, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna be real sneaky about it. Nihilus kind of like pushes Ashwin towards the front. Only <laughs> <laughs> charges forward. Towards uh, towards the light, or like towards the front of the group. <laughs> yeah, but Ashwin, uh, you said you charge oh. forward. Yeah, yeah, towards the light. Okay, and. Crispin, are you following her, or are you gonna move um, off to the side? I'm moving off to the side, and I'm sneaking. But so, um, my sneak speed is uh, your speed, so I can keep up with you <laughs> the entire time. Perfect. <laughs> Just be much sneakier about it. Um, <laughs> not very great, though. Not too sneaky. That's an eleven. Okay. Uh, Ashwin, you look to your side, and you see Crispin, who's a very large human. Uh, is is stealthing along impressively jumping uh over uh dead uh rose bushes and uh planters and such <laughs> but um nevertheless you see him and uh you head to this house and you you you're right up to the front door do you knock or um I'm definitely a nice knock on the door. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a little nail tap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Crispin, are you right up at the door with her, or? I'm a I'm a good fifteen feet, kind of angled back. Yeah. I hung, uh, hung back. What about the rest? But I want to be able to see in the door as it sure. opens. Uh, the rest of you. Um, I am way back, but I do cast thaumaturgy to whisper in her ear. You got this. <laughs> Uh, it's been a while since I looked at Thaumaturgy. Can you do that? Can you, like... Well, it allows me to, like, make a sound. Uh, right, but it... I don't think you can... I can't whisper. After... Oh, it's <laughs> three times louder than my normal <laughs> voice. Never mind, I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, um, because I... Message essentially does that. I'll have to look up on... Look at that, uh, after the show, basically figuring out the... How far Thaumaturgy can go. Um, so... You knock on the door and nobody enters. You n presumably let me know if you don't do this. Presumably, you knock a little louder uh, if nobody answers the first time. Can, uh, actually, can I check the door uh, door knob see if the door is open? <laughs> yeah, it is uh, not open. Um, it is locked. Uh, then yeah, she um, probably takes like one of her weapons and uses the hilt of it to knock louder. Sure. Uh, a few mo that that'll do it. And a few moments later. Uh, you see a, uh, someone opens the door, unlocks a bunch of stuff, a, uh, three locks about are unlocked, you think, uh, when somebody comes to the door, and this blonde-haired, middle-aged, uh, woman with horns, um, kind of jutting down, uh, opens the door, looking very alert. Uh, she's got a, a robe on and, um, everybody, eh, simple enough. Uh, you can see behind her, there's, she's kind of trying to hide a big ass long rifle behind the door. Part of it's peeking out. 
So I would say Crispin can see it, Ashwin can see it, um, and Orson and Prady, uh you're not up at the door, right? No. Okay. Um, and she she opens the door and says, she looks past you guys, uh, especially you, Ashwin, uh, and then looks down, sees you, and goes, oh my, <laughs> uh, how can I help you? Um this is uh, not the time of day to go knocking on doors. What, what time is it? Is it <laughs> You've been traveling for a while. It's You think it m- may be getting close tonight, but um, uh, yeah, so you're not entirely sure. The sun has not gone down. It's just dusk. Okay. Uh, um, I should say, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, I'm new in town and I uh, just would like some help. Is that okay? Oh, uh, yeah, well, why don't you come in? Um, it's much safer to just come in. Uh, and she offers, she steps aside, opens the door, looks out. Um, she makes eye contact with you, Crispin. Um, and uh, what do you do, Crispin? Um, I walk up like I wasn't trying to hide myself at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I just say, no, no don't go in. By herself, there, mouse. I'm out, uh, I don't. I don't know your name yet. Um, <laughs> Christmas bad with names. I do know your name, just for the record. Um, <laughs> uh, now, now, don't go in there by herself. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come with you too. And and I wave, kind of make a gesture, um, to the rest of the group. What does whether the rest... or not they can see? Yeah. Me. Uh, what? Oh, if... and I, I start co- walking forward. Okay. So yeah, do you do you yeah, enter, walk forward and you enter the house with them? Yep. Okay. And um, you enter the house, and you see on her, on the far end of the room, it's a small, small house, the far end of the room, uh, there's a table that has a bunch of guns on it in various states of repair and cleaning. And uh, she says, Yes, uh, wow, there's a much bigger group than uh, <laughs> I thought was uh, coming in, but uh, you're welcome to, to, uh, to my uh, home, uh, uh, what are what are your n- names? Uh, um, hello? hello, I'm Ashwin. Ashwin, very Ashwin. nice, very nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Crispin. It's a pleasure. Crispin. I'm Orson. Orson. Uh, Derby. Uh, I, my name is Derby. Derby. I do an impression of of a radio saying prodding rod. Oh, fantastic <laughs> accent. Uh, I can't... Where is that from? Uh, well, anyways, my name is Agatha, and uh, this is my home. Uh, I, I, I always am a little too, uh, some say, friendly to begin with, uh, especially... What happened to your neighbors? Well, uh, are, you, are you the only person living in this town? Uh, yeah, at the moment, until they return with help. Um, uh, basically, it's... Uh, help with what, exactly? Well, um, I don't know if it's the count, the Countess Kalina or what she's doing, but um, things are roaming around randomly a lot of times at night and uh there was a giant beast that did you you entered uh from the west correct or did you enter from the east you entered from the west by the way uh and she's west yeah uh <laughs> um, Across the sunken houses yeah and she says you saw that yeah that's what they're calling the uh gigan chrysos uh beast it's goes under the ground and it is huge and people don't come back if they go and try to get a closer look i don't know that happened about a few weeks ago now it has to be um anyways there's did you guys go to the tuker room and please tell me you did 
everything it asked you to do and you were completely honest about yourself? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. As far as, as I don't want to speak for myself, but. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, it was kind of embarrassing. Well, sometimes it is, but, uh, you know, as the, the poem says, uh, concerned we are not the color of your soul. Uh, thank God, because I can't be risking my daughter's life uh, if you did not uh, answer it honestly. And around that time, uh, this little uh, five or six-year-old girl comes down the stairs with her um, bear, her stuffed bear, and is freaking out at what she's seeing because <laughs> you guys are quite the motley crew. And uh, But she's not like... But Ashwin. But we have a cute mouse with us. She does see Ashwin. And she, <laughs> she, her eyes light up, and um, she looks at Nihilus, who probably has a perpetual "don't fuck with me" look, um, and uh, freaks out a little bit, and uh, sees Ashwin, and is kind of more more at ease. And um, uh, Agatha waves her over and says, "This is my daughter." Uh, Danny and uh, uh, yeah as I was saying thank God you were honest because we can't be we can't have those types of uh, we can't bear to have the consequences come down on this house essentially if you were not um, what, what are the consequences uh, well they sound they send out uh, some of the playing company the Strani playing company uh, they like to call themselves actors but uh, <laughs> the punishment is you watch a show? Oh, no, it's much worse than that. Uh, it's like disintegration rays out of floating heads and stuff. Uh, I think they're called spectators. Uh, yeah, it's much worse than that. Um, uh, I've seen many a traveler, and it's not a pretty sight. Uh, all right. Uh, she goes, Do you, would you like some tea? No, thank you. I'll take a cut. It's mighty fine here. And she makes. I would like some tea. Okay. Nope. While while she's making the tea, I I reach into my robe and I <laughs> I give the I give the I give the daughter a little a little uh, bird uh, tinker toy, clockwork toy. I'm so give glad it, it wasn't the flask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what you pull out of your robe. Yeah. Touche. Uh, <laughs> and he reaches with his other hand. <laughs> and he takes a little nip. And so this tinker toy you pull out, uh, she looks at it. She was previously edging her way towards Ashwin. Uh, but when she sees that toy, her you can tell she's it's obvious she's interested. She's trying to hide it, but she's super interested so she walks towards you and she looks at it and so it's just a bird um like wind up tinker toy that marches around mm -hmm. and she looks at you and then looks at the bird and so you're offering it to her and she she like gives you the look of like i think you're offering it to me but i just want to make sure she slowly reaches for it and she <laughs> i pat her i pat her on the head and she kind of goes Aww. like this but uh allows you to pat her head she takes it and she runs off to her mom and starts puts it down and winds it up she knows exactly what to do with it um she looks very happy uh and and uh looks a lot less anxiety ridden um as it were so uh she makes you tea all of you who ordered tea it's very good tea it's an earl gray uh it's a if you like earl gray um but she made it for you regardless of what, what you like. And um, she says, well, um, what, what is your, uh, what can I help you with? Do you guys, um, I assume you will be staying here for the night, this town, Priets, uh, is that correct? Well, yeah. if you say it's uh, terrible things roaming around the night, yeah, that'd be great if we could uh, stay here. Yeah, um... That the uh, my fellow uh, townsfolk like we've we've had um, we had another person come in here a few a uh, few days ago. What uh, was their name? Uh, Velov. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he's a weirdo. Uh, 
uh, we know. But basically, uh, you you can stay in the one of the empty buildings. They're all empty, but um, oh, we can't stay here in your home. It's a very uh, you can ask that, but it's a very small house. Like I, uh, there's there's no bed big enough to hold all of you. Um, I just feel like, and this is Nihilus talking to her. I just feel like uh, safety in numbers. You've already made such a big deal about how dangerous it is to be outside. I don't want us to be out there. Well, um, no offense, but uh, oh, I, I do. I do believe you that you were honest with the uh, uh, in the Tuket's room, but uh, the Tuker room, excuse me. Uh, I think it would just be best for for my daughter and I that. Uh, you know, we just met you, and you seem like fine people, but we just think it would be safer for us, if you don't mind, if you just stayed in a different building, and um, I'm perfectly willing to make you breakfast in the morning as... Uh... Oh. Oh, sure. You've been you've been mighty kind to us already. We don't want to impose any more than we have to. Uh, we'll find one of the other empty buildings to sleep in. Just if you, uh, if anything strikes in the night, you holler, we'll... Uh... We'll help you out. Thank you so much. Can you much. lend us some blankets? Um, there should be in the in one of the buildings, uh, the townsfolk who, who left, um, we had an arrangement that anyone who needed shelter could use their uh, lodging. Uh, oh, okay. So there should be in the other house. Uh, may what I... did uh, Vel, Velob, did he say anything about what he was doing? Other than... Uh, guiding you guys and trying to find out what happened to Alu. That was pretty much it. You guys didn't ask anything else. No, no, I'm asking her. Oh, Velov. Um, no, he was pretty quiet. Um, he's must have been... He's definitely from the Viranol because his accent is so strong. Um, I came here with my uh, late husband, but um, yeah. Uh, he did not <laughs> say anything. Okay. All so, these uh, guns, are those of your make? Yeah, my husband was a gunsmith, uh, and uh, he taught me is some he things. Dead? Pardon are me? any of those... Is, is your husband dead? Yeah, late. Uh, that's what I was uh, implying. Party um, shakes the little purse he has and then points at one of the guns. I'm thinking he might want to be buying one of them if, if they're for sale. Oh, um, Carl? these are all from my husband. I don't, I mean, how, how much? <laughs> um, he just holds up five. Five gold? Carl? No, I'm sorry, uh, sir, that. Uh, there's too much sentiment of value built up in these weapons here, so... Why does everyone love their weapons? <laughs> Pratty... Pratty goes... What? Eight? Uh, oh. No. Um, I'll tell you what, if... If anything happens that... requires it... Uh, you may use these guns as much as you like if I'm not here to defend my daughter and you need to. Oh. Okay. Uh, and so that's where we're going to call it. Um, nighttime, you're in the Viranol, and we will pick this up episode 21 next week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let's plug anything we want to plug or not plug. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um... If you want to plug your Twitter or whatever, you can do that. Let's go around the horn here. Uh, Dave. Um, yeah, you can follow me at DRod3. That's it. Okay. Uh, Ryan? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram under Ryan Omega, on Twitter under Ryan OMJ, and I have a podcast called Life Action Roleplay, a LARP podcast on iTunes and Podbean. Perfect. Uh, Ashwin Lex. You can find me on Instagram at it's period underscore period Lex or on Twitter at itsylex. Perfect. Brian? 
Uh, you probably can't find me anywhere, and that's just how I like it. <laughs> but I have had a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us, by the way. Uh, I had a lot fun. of fun having you with us, and hopefully you'll continue to be with us. Absolutely. Uh, Richard. Hi, my name is Richard. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Le Richard C. I also host two podcasts, The Awkward Human Survival Guide and Interview with a Nerd, so check those out. Beautiful. I am Jake Friday. I've been your DM. You can follow me at Jake Friday on Twitter. Follow Venture Ventures. And thank you. Join us next week for another adventure. This time, uh, I think we'll have everyone again, actually. Uh, never mind. Uh, we'll see you guys later. And be good to yourself. Be good to one another. And uh, play all the D&D &D you can.